Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to Tactical Review. So on last Wednesday's live stream, among all of the various subjects that we covered, Elias and I had a very involved discussion surrounding no-knock warrants and the militarization of the United States police. So that discussion was buried a little over an hour into the stream. So I know a lot of folks weren't were able to catch the stream and going back and re-watching an entire live stream can be a little tedious. So what I've done for us this week is I have taken and condensed that discussion down and we are representing that here again. So if you caught the live stream last week, you can uh, just leave this playing for the view time for me. Appreciate you. Uh, but you've already seen everything after this, uh, so if you weren't able to catch that live stream, instead of watching the whole thing for this segment, you can watch that here. I have edited out uh, side discussion with folks in the live chat, uh, condensed it for time, so uh, there's still something to be gleaned, and there was about uh, an entire hour before this segment of various discussions. So you can go back and catch that if you want, but let's go back to Elias and I last Wednesday. This is a slippery slope and a dangerous thing to say. Sometimes people don't understand until there's some force put behind something. Now, that's... Boy, that really feels like a great segue to our final topic tonight, don't you think? <laughs> Because sure. that could be taken <laughs> way too far, and even though we are an hour yep. into the stream, now I think that we're getting to what both Elias and I considered kind of the intended meat and potatoes of the night. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, this is one of the things that um, kind of came up in just discussions this week. I actually started, I think, a big part of it started from... Um, something my wife was uh, working on and it had to do with um, video she had to watch mm -hmm. of the militarization of police. And you and I got to talking and we were talking about the different things going on. And it kind of went from there. Oh, you were talking about that uh, no not right. raid. As you guys know, our subjects on a week-by-week -week basis are by and large gleaned from the headlines since the previous week. Now, there's some mm -hmm. you know callbacks and things like that. Um, but of course, there, that means that there has been a recent story surface that precipitated this being in our stream this week. And um, the particular incident that we are looking at occurred in Atlanta on March, or excuse me, in Louisville, Kentucky um, on March 13th. And so... Let me drop a link there again, a uh, link in the chat for you guys if you want to do any of your own reading. <clears throat> and let's back up. Let's go clear back in time to, I think, the very first Tactical Review live stream. And I read a fictional account highlighting uh, the dangers of red flag laws. Now, this particular uh, yeah. situation in this news story did not occur due to a, an extreme risk protection order. It was, in fact, a screwed-up no-knock warrant being served by the Louisville Metro Police Department. Um, mm -hmm. They were going out on a no-knock raid uh, to execute a drug search warrant. They went to the wrong residence. Um, and kicked in the door and the man of the house the boyfriend of the deceased we'll go ahead and just put that out there that this went as bad as possible he did exactly what I would hope that I would do if all of a sudden my doors are kicked in and I see armed men in my house he grabbed for his firearm mm -hmm. and he opened fire um in the process 
uh, again, not knowing that this was law enforcement, and I'm going to use that term very loosely because in this case, uh, they were breaking and entering. They went to the wrong house. They did not identify themselves. They were breaking yep. and entering. It was so this was an arm breaking and entering. Um, I'm very thankful that in the state of Indiana, that's exactly how this would be viewed too. And anyway, so this man opened fire. Of course, the police, upon being fired upon, returned fire, and his girlfriend, who was, oh, well, yeah, completely in the nude, died in a hail of gunfire. Um, Brastard yeah. says a no-knock warrant is the same as any other home invasion, and I, I don't disagree with that. Oh, I agree. So, I agree. but yeah. this one. <sighs> This one gets even worse. I'll go ahead and let you kind of sound like you were getting ready to say something. So, Oh, no. I was just going to agree. I mean, no-knock warrants <laughs> should never happen. And, you know, the really sad part of it, too, is no-knock warrants, the vast majority of them are approved. With the judges just let them do whatever they want to. The vast majority of them have nothing to do with any kind of violent offender you might you know one might think no knock warrants being used to go get somebody who's a you know a mass murderer or, or serial killer or somebody very violent but no most of them are actually search warrants for drugs oftentimes something as simple as marijuana um no matter what your views are on marijuana or drugs in general i think we can all agree that it doesn't require a no knock raid at two o'clock in the morning the numbers of no knock raids have dramatically risen um i found some numbers yesterday or this morning or somewhere where in 1981 there was something like i think 3,000 no-knock raids for the entire year and in 2005 it was 50,000 no-knock raids um you know you talk about the the person who just died from it i mean you've got yeah. kids that were been killed from this there was a seven-year-old in detroit that she was shot and killed while sleeping on the couch. The there was one where it was a um, a flashbang was thrown oh, in geez. into a baby's crib. The baby had to be the baby had to be put into a medically induced coma because of how bad the burns are. I mean, this is and most of the time the cops are completely scot free. They have no liability. Um, there's a couple places where that's changed. Texas is a big one. Uh, Texas has been one where they have showed that they are liable, and there's a couple others. Um, if we have time, we'll go into it, and if not, then I'll just talk about it on my show instead. Uh. So <laughs> here's the thing, though. Okay, uh, Elias and I, again, as you guys have ascertained, we do a lot of communicating before, after the show, sidebars during the show. That may or may not happen. Um, and I, I, I told Elias, I said, is it – so – um, there was an officer injured. Apparently, he took a shot to the leg, and that's all I know for sure. I asked Elias, I said, is it wrong of me that my only fault at, on this boyfriend who did the shooting is the fact that there wasn't a body on the receiving end? Okay, if I have any law enforcement friends listening, that sounds really callous. Well, here's the thing. Once again, a group of armed men come in my home i train for center mass or pelvic girdle shots they are high percentage shots that are going to stop the attack on my life and elias you made a good point too the other thing this is doing is because if we do not hold the police liable for things like this this is training criminals to just break in and yell police oh yeah yeah because you know exactly yeah, it's training them that they can do this, and if we are being trained, which, mark my words, we're being trained, we're being trained to accept that it might be the cops, so don't shoot because it might be them. Um, something like a flashbang is not really hard to recreate. I won't, we won't go into it, obviously, but it's not really that hard to create. I'm sure some, there's some creative people out there that can figure out how to make a homemade flashbang very, very easily. That wouldn't actually do any damage, but since most people don't know what a flashbang actually looks like or sounds like, it would be very easy to make a very miniature one that can confuse homeowners. And now they think, okay, well, it might be the cops who put my gun down because 
I'm going to go to jail even though I know I didn't do anything wrong. Which is, uh, you know, as uh, Mark is pointing out, how many times wrong the police get it. New York commissioner um, estimated that 10% of no-knock raids were the wrong house. Because there, there, there is no punishment. There's no consequences. In some states, the courts have ruled, nope, there's no, uh, what do you call it, um, liability on the cops. Now, in Indiana, that's different. Due to the fact that these things happening a lot, the Indian legislature passed a law that said that if you go into a house and it's the wrong address because you didn't do your due diligence and the homeowner shoots you, the homeowner is not liable. They're going to treat it I mean, as a home invasion, it is. period. Because you didn't have a warrant to go in. Yeah, because you did not have a warrant to go into that house. Right. Therefore, it is a home invasion. This guy's girlfriend is dead. Um, and, mm-hmm. and this is an absolutely an ongoing thing so i i i don't mean to sound oh, callous yeah. but um i have friends in law enforcement and if any of my friends in law enforcement catch this stream i want you guys to know i have family in law enforcement i hold you guys to a higher standard than that that's all there is to it there's there's a difference between right and there's a difference between a <clears throat> law enforcement officer and, and the system and it is my and belief the, the system Gestapo. is broken. So, anyway, um, yes. here's here's the thing. We've talked about this before. Uh, this is a government, allegedly, of the people, for the people, and by the people. We have a Correct. citizen Correct. soldier program. Our military is of the people. Mm-hmm. Our law enforcement are of the people. This stuff where they get special passes and stuff, I that yeah no, that and I mean bothers I, me. I, and that's that. And we're gonna we're gonna have to come back around to that. Um, so all that to say is, if I as a reg, regular citizen would be liable for X, Y, or Z, then every mm-hmm. law enforcement officer in America needs to be liable for x y and z uh just like i am responsible for every round that leaves my firearm if i'm at the range and i have too much of an angle on my shot and it clears the berm and i'm firing and i'm firing a 30-06 or a 50 bmg and it travels three quarters of a mile and domes somebody on a farm i'm liable for murder well, police officers, right. they're, they're citizen police officers. And as a matter of fact, allegedly, they are highly trained individuals. They should be held to an even higher standard. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's, that's but, yeah, we'll have to talk about that. We at have some talked point. about that a little bit. You know, but. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So. <clears throat> But you know that that's part of the that's part of the problem. And you know, we're, they're not even being held to mil. They want to pretend that they're the military, but they're not even right. being held to military standards. You know, it's easier for a cop to shoot somebody in America than it was for no, the, abs- a soldier. Absolutely, to engage in enemy we're going to come back to that because re- real quick, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it really, really was, and you know that and right. that's that's a problem. You know, this is we're within our country. There's not a war here. We're not in a war. There's no reason for the police to act as if they are against everybody. And that's what's really happening. You know, and I think it's I think more we need not just the liability, but I think that the states need to adopt more of the Indiana stance where when somebody shoots a police officer who's invaded their house and it's the wrong address, not only is it that the cops are liable for anything they do, you know, right now they can go in there and smash up the entire house and leave. And that's right. it. You're just out of luck. Um, but also, the people themselves can't be held liable right. when they're defending so, their house. Um, in the situation, though, in Louisville, um, the judge released this individual, uh, Mr. Walker, who was the the fellow who opened fire on the on the invaders. Uh, he was released into right. house arrest. Um, keep in mind that he is trying to pick up the pieces of his life and deal with the fact that his girlfriend was murdered by the cops, by the way. Well, um, mm-hmm. uh, I believe it was Arsenal 616. 
ironically, I get a lot of my news from some of the meme pages that I follow. But so this was the fraternal, the um, Louisville Fraternal Order of Re of Police's response. I have blown that up, so I do apologize for the image quality. I'm just going to leave this up there and let you guys bask in the glory of that. I shared this with Elias earlier. And keeping in mind that, yes, we have an injured police officer. Uh, however, we have no dead police officers, but we do have a dead civilian. And this was the FOP's Correct. response to this. I think in Spanish, the proper pronunciation for what this is, is Merda de Toro. Uh, it's just a nice heaping, steaming divot is what that is. It's, it's absolutely garbage. Abs yeah. Absolutely garbage. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, uh, the guy in question is not a threat at all to the men and women of law enforcement I'd actually say it's probably the opposite law enforcement has become a threat to the man this is complete um, he said, BS. and one more situation now this one I don't have as much information about um, we do not have the official story on this yet we don't even uh, the couple of semi-official police responses that I have seen so far have been contradictory. Copy date on this is March 13th. Uh, it was very shortly before this. And you maybe have seen the hashtag, his name was Duncan Limp. There was a no-knock warrant uh, served on yeah. his home. He was allegedly an imminent threat to law enforcement or the public and initial uh, impressions are that he was shot in the head from a round originating outside his home. That my friends is an assassination. That's not self-defense. That's not, that is an assassination. There have been alleged like drug charges. Um, my understanding is that he was actually limp was a computer programmer who was uh, attempting to build a decentralized sure bait kind of like a forum for uh, three percenters or militia or modern-day Minutemen Patriots whatever any of us want to call ourselves he was working on a platform for those of us who would consider ourselves in that vein uh, to be able to communicate uh, in, in the event that all of the major platforms decide that we are a dangerous society. So that that's kind of where we are on these no-knock raids. I really wish I could say that I had been proven wrong in what I said all of those four months ago, five months ago. I wish I could say that society was proving me wrong and that, in fact, these red flag laws are exactly what they claim to be and that they make the world a safer place. And no, innocent people are dying, which gets us to the point of the militarization of the, the American police officer. And this goes back to the 70s. Does that sound right? Uh, yeah, it started around the 60s or the 70s with the uh, riots, the race riots in L.A. <laughs> uh, that's where you start seeing SWAT towards the end of the 60s. And, you know, this is an area where, and this is the reason I said I'm probably going to end up talking about it on my show because of the fact that this is something that I've, is really important to me. Uh, the right. fact that we've militarized our police. It, like I said, it started back then with the SWAT, and it has just grown. You know, one of the big key things was in the 90s. They pushed it over the edge. was in the 90s. Uh, in California, there was a bank robbery mm -hmm. where the bank robbers were much better armed than the police. And that's really what pushed. Now you're talking about armored vehicles, and you're talking about cops are driving around on patrols with AR-15s which we're told are military 
military weapons. Right. So, right. let's remember that. We're being told these are military weapons. Why do the police need military weapons? If that's what you're going to classify them, we'll, we'll play that game. But then why, are they, why do they have it? A police force does not need that. Those are, we're told, weapons for war. So why do police, who are supposed to supposedly protect and serve the community, driving around with those? Right. That's one of those things, though, that I'm going to say I don't have a problem with regular patrol cops having body armor. Now, we're being told that civilians don't need body armor. I don't have a problem, per se, with patrol officers having an AR-15 or even possibly an M4. Here's the caveat. I don't think that we as normal civilians should have any extra hurdles to clear than what they have to put those in their patrol car. Absolutely. And again, it goes back to that militarization. when. Right police started being convinced that we they used to have the thing of the thin blue line mm -hmm. they stand between good and bad the thin blue line has become more of we're surrounded by bad right and we can't trust anybody so <clears throat> we're just going to assume everybody is a criminal and that is a wannabe military mindset right you know one of the things that really really irks me is the fact that they refer to none police as civilians it was, uh, it was actually kind of a wrong. While I was still in the military, I actually went on a um, police ride mm -hmm. along, just on my own. I wanted to see what it was like, and I went on a ride along. It was in Las Vegas, and when the uh, officer is calling in the start of his shift over the radio, he identifies that he has one civilian, and I started laughing. <laughs> like, hang on a second, I'm the one that's in the military. You're the civilian, right? You know, that's that's a big problem when you start looking at it as us against them and that's really where this whole thing has is become is us versus them and that is not the mindset that police officers should be having fine have an ar-15 why because they're civilians and right. to all any police who are friends of yours i'm not saying that to offend you that's the way this is it was supposed to be oh, absolutely. you are civilian absolutely you are officers of the state to help maintain peace and order but you're civilians you're not military and, you know and one of the biggest problem biggest disservices to police also is the fact that they're not trained correctly you know which makes it even rougher there was uh, somebody who had done a study that says you know when when really the SWAT teams end up against somebody who knows what they're doing mm -hmm. the SWAT teams end up dead it, oftentimes because they don't or, yeah, they don't know they don't know the proper way so when military go in you know and I'm not infantry so anybody who's infantry can correct me because my understanding you know when you go into a house or you go into a building in a war zone, you assume you're going to probably have to kill everybody inside. Right. And so you go in with that mentality. Well, that's not the mentality we want our, our officers to have. We don't want the cops... You know, they, they talk about the fact that, you know, you throw in a, they throw in a flashbang into a house, and then they start yelling orders. Anybody who's ever had a flashbang knows what it does to you. It disorient, or disorients you horribly. Mm -hmm. You can't hear. You can't see. You have no idea what's going on. And so then you can't comply because they don't have any idea of what's going on and they end up dead. Right. Well, and Braster just pointed out <clears throat> um, cops are not civilians. They have extra rights that soldiers and regular citizens don't have. So let's go back and let's talk about something we touched on when we talked about mm -hmm. the no-knock raids. And you and I spoke about it again today while we were prepping for the show. Um, we're going to go back to... Mm -hmm. uh, me a, a, having read both of Nick Irving's, that's Nick the Reaper Irving, um, both of his autobiographical books. One thing he talked about as a direct action sniper, e even in the Army Rangers, so these are, you know, these are full on operators here. He talked about when they'd go back for the debriefing and the forensics team was in there confirming clean kills and, and how nerve-wracking that was because he would be you know his career in the military would have been over and uh, he would have been facing legal action on the international level for killing a civilian if he did not have good kills and yet we have mm -hmm. so many places in the United States where the police in practicality 
we have situations like what happened in Louisville where, you know, we don't know what the outcome of that's going to be yet, but the Fraternal Order of Police is already whining about a man who fired on armed home invaders being mm-hmm. released to house arrest because those armed home invaders happened to be police officers. And, and that's, that's yep. garbage. They preferentially hire, police departments preferentially hire former military. From a discipline standpoint, I could maybe see where that would come from. But the problem is, once again, we have had 20 years of continuous warfare. That means that somebody at this point with previous military experience has a very high likelihood of that previous experience, including combat duty. Uh, and, and a very high likelihood of that being active combat duty, not just in a conflict zone, but actually yeah. having gone in, cleared structures with the teams, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, engaged combatants, all of the things that we don't want on our streets. Right. You know, I, I'm former military. And so this is not meant uh, to, you know, obviously disparage any veterans, including combat veterans. But I don't believe that a soldier who is freshly coming out of that kind of mentality and that kind of environment should not be a police officer. I think they need to take some time. They need to reintegrate into society. They need to get themselves stabilized. And into a point where they can learn how to be police without letting, without the military training, right? Be what is at the forefront, because being a police officer is not the same as being a military, and we have got to stop allowing that mentality to um, exist, because it's not the same. When a cop is walking his beat or driving his, you know, nowadays or whatever. I don't want the police, the cop driving around to sit there and analyze me, ask, right. is, am I a threat? Is this person a threat? Is, are my kids a threat? That's, that's not a good way no for a cop to be. No more or less than each of us as responsibly armed citizens. It, it, you know, because I do, Correct. I analyze when I, when I see somebody, is this person a threat? I mean, we've right. got to do that. And, but, and I see what you're saying, but there's people who would take that to the extreme. Right, but there is a difference. There is a difference, <clears throat> exactly. And when you've been in a combat situation, you do. That's where right. we get the whole PTSD and that kind of thing. We do have that because when you've been in that thing of you know at any second you're likely to be shot in a war zone or shot at or attacked in some way, the likeliness of it here, while we all should be kind of aware of our <clears throat> surroundings, the likeliness of our being attacked here is right. ridiculously lower than in a combat zone. And I don't want cops who have just come from combat zones. They just shouldn't be there. It, it takes time, and they need to be thoroughly right. psychologically evaluated to make sure that they can. But again, our government has been pushing this militarization. So... From a government standpoint, right. this is exactly so, what they wanted. Um, I have a, a friend. She's going through criminal justice uh, classes right now in college. And her intention is to go into law enforcement. Now, one thing I really like is she selectively uses the term peacekeeping officer, which is exactly what our police force is supposed to be, which isn't to say that violence won't occur. But the objective is to keep the peace, to de-escalate, not to escalate. Correct. So anyway, um, Correct. we had an opportunity to converse. Uh, I was really hoping that she would be able to be here and be in the chat. And, because once again, I want all sides of the conversation. So, And so I told her that we were going to be talking about militarization of the, of the American police force. And she asked, out of curiosity, are you for or against? Uh, Anyway, my response was against. And this is going to be the part, some of you guys aren't going to like this. 
I am pro-law enforcement, and by that I mean I am pro-peacekeeper. I am anti-Gestapo. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the perfect way to describe uh, these militarized yes. police force, where, where every officer is, you know, going around wearing basically military fatigues and there's that physical stance look my my dad used to be a bouncer at one of the local bars and he said he he told me growing up he's like you know the nights that i went in wearing like a polo shirt and khakis i had fewer problems than the nights that i went in mm -hmm. wearing like a a, a cut off t-shirt or or a tank top and shorts yep. and yep because the whole thing let's face it you get one chance to make a first impression so anyway mm -hmm. um and and so i continued on i said combat tactics very rarely have a place on our streets and should be reactive in nature not proactive and the news stories that we led this segment off with are are perfect examples of that proactive combat strategies are end up with flashbangs in babies' cribs. Yep. They end up, they, they are these no-knock warrants. Mm -hmm. Those are full-on, proactive combat tactics. Reactive would be, oh, wow, look, these bank robbers have fully automatic weapons. They're killing people. Well, yeah. Break out the snipers. Match force for force in that situation. Here's going to be my argument, but it shouldn't be the cops. Okay. That's what you have National Guard for. That was the intention of things like that, of militias. That was the intention of militias was that when something like that happened, you bring in militias. I guarantee you, you throw a militia at a group of bank robbers that are threatening innocent lives, and you're going to have some people who will join in and make sure that the threat's neutralized. Yeah. P you know, police officers, like you said, you know, when you talk about the clothing, look in the last 20 years how they've changed clothing. They went from wearing slacks, button-up shirt, and ties to, like mm -hmm. you said, wearing fatigues, to the point of some of them wearing camo. That's not needed. They were meant to be more professional, as uh, Brester just pointed out. You know, um, or I'm sorry, it was Mark who pointed out the fact that they went from being peace right. officers to law enforcers. That you know is another one of those really subtle changes. But right. when you bring it all together. It definitely creates a right. sense of us. So versus them. yeah, our our um, our conversation went on. Uh, I said, and I've said it already tonight. For example, I have no issues with body armors. I have no issues with a full-on select fire M4, mm -hmm. as long as again with the with the caveat that we as regular people should be able to own those. But in it, for what reason does any police department? need a Bradley fighting vehicle? Why do they need an APC? Why do they need MRAPs? An, an MRAP is a troop transport Correct. where you expect to come across IEDs. Continuing on with the uh, conversation, uh, her response was she likes the reactive, not proactive comment. She said, like I fully support SWAT, but not every patrol officer needs the things they have. Now, and that's where we're gonna have some contention here. Um, because what you're saying is instead of having a militia within the police department, the well-regulated militia of the United States needs to be who steps in there. Or the more officially sanctioned militia of the National Guard. And then my response was, and SWAT doesn't need rolled as often as they are in many places. On call, listening on comms, ready to go? Sure. If we're going to resort to using SWAT instead of the National Guard. Her response was, in her opinion, the places that SWAT is called too often, they have a weak department. If the patrolmen feel like they need SWAT to come in and save the day with their fancy armor and weapons, then you have a weak department who's not willing to do what it takes to do the job. And then I made a counterpoint to that. Or you have a department that has bought fully into the us versus them mentality against civ civilians. 
and so misunderstand what the job even is. And that's why right. I don't feel that there is any hypocrisy here in me saying I support my local sheriff's department, who is my local peacekeeping organization, and I am more than willing to make a video like this. Uh, number one, once again, the sheriff's department is, is headed by an elected official. And number two, I know the guys on my local sheriff's department. And they're all constitutional in nature. They all support my right, your right, mm -hmm. our right to keep and bear arms. And they understand that an armed citizenry makes their job easier. And I think you'll find a lot of them do. I think, I think you have several different categories. I think a lot, I think most people that go into being a police officer <clears throat> do it with honorable intentions now i'm going to go on record here and say the far left this is my left i know it's backwards on the screen and the far right both want what we have and more of it because and that, yes. that's why i really really try to say instead of the left i try to say statists because we have statists on both sides of the aisle. I will maintain that until yeah. one of them Epstein's me. And they want this consolidation of power into the state. They want a Gestapo. Mm -hmm. Legitimately, they'll call right. it something else, but that's exactly what they want, where the police are a special group, and they disappear regular people, and there's no liability for it. There's... Mm -hmm. And then, but on both the left and the right side, in a more centrist view on this, we want less government oversight and don't necessarily have a problem with people who have a shield or a badge, uh, but they need to understand that they are civilians who happen to have the authority vested in them by their fellow civilians to do things like arrest people who are not doing the things okay. that we all agree are part of a productive society. You know, if you, if your pursuit of happiness is going away, going out and taking other people's right to life, well then, yeah, you, somebody who has authority or a posse of regular regular old Americans need to just put a rope around your neck and rack you up the nearest tree. Right. Unfortunately, though, there's no due process there. And that's what makes... That's why I think that there is a place for a civilian police force that is answerable to the population as a whole. And you know, even even you know, we go back to the 1800s. I think it was. I know I was older than that. I'm sure. Um, the police force mm -hmm. in England, they were purposely designed in a different way to make sure people didn't think they were military. You know, the military at the time wore red, so mm -hmm. the police wore blue or black. You know, on purpose to get them away from that mentality of you're not military. You're here to help keep the peace. You know, if anybody's acting stupid, you handle it but that they were not military and now we are going backwards and that's what we based ours initially on our police force came from what they were doing in england well and, and even in backwards. england they've had to do so because once again as they try more and more to disarm the citizens because violence is increasing they're finding that the criminals don't give a crap and they will do whatever they have to to be yeah. violent and that's right. always been the problem and that's always been the problem, is that the criminals are always going to get right. a hold of whatever they want. It does not matter how illegal you make it, they'll get a hold of whatever it is they want. Um, you know, just look at the, you know, war between the uh, the IRA and the British the entire time. And they've always been able to get what they look, want. Look, it, it may not to. be the most reliable, so, it may not be the most ergonomic, it may not be the prettiest, but unless you outlaw hardware stores, you cannot outlaw firearms because so, some dude's going to go out in his garage and knock one together. But that's the, the my point is is that bad people find a way. We and the problem is is I'm preaching to the choir here. I hope you guys got something out of that. Elias and I really enjoyed that discussion. 
probably some topics that unfortunately we will have to revisit as time marches on. Unfortunately, it does look like a trend that the whole country is barreling towards. Uh, hopefully, with this being an election year, we can reverse some of that. But that's up to you and I. If you're not following the channel on social media, you can do that over at Facebook and Instagram using this username right here. If you'd like to help support the channel directly, you can do that over on Patreon. If you want to help support the channel, but you'd like to get a little something back, you can do that by going over to the merchandise store on Teespring, pick you up some t-shirts or some coffee cups, and every purchase there, a few dollars comes back to the channel and just helps out the things that, that we do here. If you like content like this, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and click that notification bell so you see when I upload new content. And speaking of platforms, you might want to use the links down in the description and make sure to also follow the channel on either GunStreamer or BitChute just in case YouTube decides to pull the plug on all the gun channels. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you on the live stream Wednesday. Until next time, shoot straight, stay safe.